Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this week's episode of the Sensei Playbook podcast, marketing strategy for the dealer world to hopefully do less and impact more. Uh, you're in for a real treat. We have Tim Cox, our guest for the next 30 or so minutes. Uh, he is the founder and owner of Car Now. He's a career car guy. Uh, oh boy, what a heart of leadership this man has. He's going to talk about impact. He's going to talk about differentiation. If you're not different, you're dead. But most importantly, what I drew from this episode is you are going to understand that when a man or a woman is defined in their purpose, isn't it amazing the way people get the heck out of the way, then come beside to help them with their aims. This gentleman is all about intent. He's all about a heart to serve, and he's all about servant leadership. And so if that's interesting to you, you'll want to tune in. This one is going to be bookmarked. Welcome to the Sensei Playbook, the ultimate how-to podcast for growing and amplifying your brand within the digital world's three-second landscape. Join Bill Courtright and Chris Snellgrove as they discuss the right tools and strategies for building the best online marketing strategy for your business. Tune in to leading business leaders who share information and impart inspiration on providing smooth customer experience and successfully scaling your venture. This is your chance to achieve rapid growth in the highly competitive online market. Let's get this episode started with your hosts, Bill and Chris. Yeah, what Calipari was the first to adopt the one and done without without judgment or issue. And yeah. uh, said, listen, you want, I'll get you the NBA faster and more successfully than anybody else yeah. can. Yeah. Just uh, play hard when you're here, will you? That's 100%. That's 100%. But anyway, don't get me started, Kentucky basketball. We'll never get these things reported. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Well, listen, uh, on behalf of Chris and our entire team, thank you so much uh, for you. I know you're an incredibly uh, busy and influential person, Tim. Uh, Chris and I have spent um, uh, a considerable amount of time over the last uh, few days getting up to speed on what Tim Talks is all about, what Cardinal is engaged in. Uh, but before we get started in, in the relevance of our, of our product sets and the businesses we run and, and the people we serve, um, you know, it's been said, Tim, that uh, business today is not about the products we, we sell, but rather the stories we tell. And uh, I would uh, be better as a man if you could share your story with us and our listeners. So, um... You know, I'm just a car guy. I mean, I don't know about just of, um, but my my story started in Kentucky back in 89 as a 17 year old kid selling cars for the Jake Sweeney group. Um, I'm a little, not a little, I'm a lot emotional. That's important to me. Um, the fact that that entire group uses us is, is pretty special. Um, moved to Atlanta in 1995 and uh, started selling cars at uh, Evans Toyota. Long story short, went through the ranks Ended up managing a Toyota store for, you know, eight years and then went to Hennessy Lexus, um, sales manager there for 10 years. Um, Andy Park, uh, who was an uh, um, entrepreneur journeyman, did very well with a company called Blade Logic. Uh, you guys can Google that. They had a very nice exit in 2008. Uh, just walked into my dealership and wanted to learn the car business. And at the time, I was trying to, there was other, and we all know there's other big there's a big luxury brand that came here in Atlanta, uh, pre-owned and was selling, you know, cars with maybe dirty car faxes and stuff like that. And I had to not only differentiate my, you know, my cars, but I had to differentiate myself. So how do I differentiate the experience? Hence, we landed on, all, you know, 10, 100 times, depending on the dealership, more people going into your website than physically going into the dealership. So if I could differentiate my store there and pull more people in. Therefore, I'd sell more cars, and that's freaking exactly what happened. Um, so in December uh, December 1st, I uh, had a great uh, – Peter Hennessy is one of my heroes, uh, incredible human being, loved the organization, loved the people, um, gave them about 100 days notice, uh, interviewed and talked to my replacement who's still there. Uh, Peter told me kind words. He said, look, I hate you're leaving me better than anyone's ever left me before, but he said, I really believe you're made for this. Um, and with that, knowing that Peter had my back and I could, you know, if it blew, you know, in, in life, you always look at the worst case scenario. What's the worst thing that can happen? And the worst th thing that can happen, you know, I'm a pretty good car guy. So I'm like, you know what, let's, let's do this. And, and we have just, um, been 
Look, there's been trials, there's, there's ups and downs and there's drama, like, especially in any organization that grows as fast as we did. Uh, my faith is important to me. Uh, my favorite verse is to him, Ephesians 3, 20 uh, through 22, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we could hope for, ask for. And immeasurably more has been my life uh, even before Car now. So, so I give him the glory. Um, but I think that's, you know, we've just continued to grow and adapt. And we tell people we're by, you know, we were built by dealers. We literally were built in my dealership. And we, we bring smart people uh, close to us and we continue to grow to, you know, they say whether it's true or not, you know, they say, don't, you know, don't, don't, you know, read your own press clippings, but we've been uber blessed. And they say we're the, fa we were the fastest growing rooftop wise uh, company in automotive history, whether that's true or not, I don't know. Got the 4,000 rooftops in about five and a half years, maybe wow. six, something like that. Um, and continue to grow. So um, we're just going to keep cranking. So um, we're looking forward to NADA and I'll just park there before I start rambling. We've just, uh, our success has been humility and we're just going to out, you know, we've got great products, but you know, the service of the dealer to the dealer based on my pain sitting in the dealership, you know, something breaks on a Saturday and you can't get anybody on your phone and support says, send in a ticket. You know, I, I, I got to sell cars, right? Having that mentality, I think um, has been, one of the reasons that 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 we've grown the way we have. And congratulations, Tim! You, you've gone over five thousand rooftops recently, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, I, um, you know, I, it, it's awesome. frustrating because people you know, some over the weekend. You know, you guys probably are the car guy in your family and and through the company, and and somebody's looking for a Bronco, and they said, "Hey, don't we have this group?" and there was a time that I, I knew, um, you know, uh, every single group. But, yeah, we're, I think we're hovering somewhere in the 5,200 range right now. Wow, that's incredible. That's awesome. That's awesome. So it's amazing. It sounds like you definitely had your finger on the pulse of what was going on in the car business. And that's clear from, from your position as a career car guy and, and advanced to sales manager there at Hennessy uh, when car, car Now began its development. But one thing I noticed just in looking at the platform is uh, how intuitive and in tune, I guess I should say, with the uh, consumer experience. And, and, you know, you clearly had both sides mapped out. Can you tell uh, us a little bit about what went into understanding kind of that same side selling approach of understanding the communication preference of, of today's consumer and really uh, marrying that with, with, well, what was probably a pretty disruptive event from the dealer side? You know, we study human behavior. And, and data doesn't lie. You know, I, I've said it. In fact, you know, Brooke first, uh, she called me and she said, Hey, I, I heard you use this phrase, you know, four years ago, would you mind if I started a podcast called facts, Trump, you know, facts, not feelings. And I'm like, it's not mine, but I say it all the time. Facts, not feelings. And the facts are, you know, I, it's the goal. It goes back to the golden rule. Uh, let, let, let me, let me, let me just give you some more facts. So, so, Werner Mazda is in one of the smallest PMAs in the country. Fact. Bottom 10. I think it's bottom 10%. Mazda people don't, don't kill me. I think it's bottom 10%. Uh, Manchester, uh, New Hampshire has uh, less than 100,000 people. But yet they ended the year. They ended the year at number 32 out of 600 Honda, or, uh, Mazda stores. And if you talk to Bob Werner, you talked about Tim talks earlier as we were, as we were, he says, look, this isn't a tough deal. We sell cars the way people want to buy them, not the way we want to sell them. And the reason that I had the smallest PMA and the reason that, or one of the smallest PMAs, and the reason that I'm on the, at the top is because we understand and we give consumers what they want. Are they perfect? No. I'm hesitant on, you know, as I travel the country and microphones and all, all the other stuff of getting, giving actual names. Cause then somebody will go on the website and oh, they suck. Or they had a bad look at the end of the day, scoreboard, smallest PMA, 32 out of 600. That's it. Are they going to miss a few in here? Hey, well, we all do. You know, I mean, the Cowboys had the, <laughs> anybody watch the Cowboys game last night? <laughs> best D, best offense, 40 scored 40 points on average at home. And they got crushed. Things happen. But the difference is looking at the game film every day. So, 
So understanding that we understood that people want to have a conversation and understanding that is, is our UI perfect? No. In fact, we just spent a lot of money bringing in what we feel uh, just this, just a month or so ago, the best UI UX people in the country to, to take us to even the next level um, because that's it. Um, people want, let, let me give you a statistic. We looked at a data set of 292,917 of conversations through our platform. The ones that did not, it, you did not, that, that, and talk about completed, not sold after the fact, but in the tool, the digital retailing tool, did they act from beginning click to send a deposit? That's what I call a deal. How, what, how many times did that happen? It's sub 1%, sub 1%. If they have one conversation, one conversation in that experience, it goes to 12.74%. Wow. So, so, so facts, not feelings. So we, we started preaching this years ago and look, our competitors, look, if we can, rising tide raises all ships, right? Uh, and now people are starting to add chat and communication platforms and everything that they do. So it's just understanding that and understanding, you know, how the market shifts, you know, pre COVID, you know, studying the data, you know, check availability was the worst thing you could put on your website. Single worst. Nobody clicked it. During COVID, two years after COVID, rocket ship. Why? Nobody has image work. So studying that and then pushing them, not using full AI, and maybe we can talk that because that's pretty passionate right now, what's happened and what's happened to some, some great people that just, you know, you know uh, anyway, uh, you know, what we think the right mix is, we, we think the right mix is, um, has continued to just continue to push the ball forward for us. Yeah. Oh, very cool. I can only imagine the conversations that you were having back in 14 and 15. I think now it kind of goes without saying, you know, people are willing to have conversations with websites through chat. People will talk through a Google business profile through Facebook. Uh, they want to text. They don't want to talk. Um, and, uh, you know, I can only imagine what those conversations were like with dealers in 14, 15, and 16. It's kind of like QR codes after COVID. When you saw them before COVID, you're like, what the hell was that for? And then afterwards, you wouldn't order a cheeseburger without one. So it was like, I, I can imagine how uh, the opportunities changed. Um, uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. And, you know, I, I love that you, you focus on, on UI and UX because I think the buyer's journey of, of no like, trust, try, buy, repeat, and refer um, you know, those, those sales concepts and that journey was always on a business card or, or a, a laminated card that we carried in our back pocket as sales professionals coming up, you know, the steps of selling. And then to have somebody put that online and really extend the dealership to the virtual space and understand, hey, it doesn't have to be any different. You know, there still needs to be a prompt, friendly, enthusiastic reading. You still need to find out what they're looking for. You still need to qualify them. You still need to support them. Most importantly, you need to ask the questions answer the questions even before they have a chance to ask you directly. And when you do that, that's the speed of trust. And, that, and that's when that no like trust becomes that overwhelmingly positive user experience. And then you go from not a solution, but the solution. Is this kind of the conversations that y'all were having back in 14, 15, 16, that now seems kind of elementary today? It was, and I would argue, and, and we're getting ready to go through a complete retool, um, you know, we, we did uh, hit it out of the park back then. We were going, you know, we were, I mean, I, you, you guys were still park. I, I mean, we were selling chat for 1500 bucks and we were, it was so far ahead of everything else with sending a video. We were the first, I mean, we were, we, 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 were, we pride ourselves in being the first. We were the first, not, I, I'm just telling, we were the first to add rich content and chat in any vertical. Too bad you can't, you know, you cannot patent software, you know, and you guys know that, but Somebody changes one line and it's not the same code, but rich objects, including a dealer's inventory in a chat, you know, being able to send that uh, video, all that was, was us. So we were so far ahead. I would get halfway through a demo and this isn't a prideful statement. It's just fact. Uh, our, our guys did a good job of writing it. Um, they'd ask, Hey, can we invest? You know, cause this is so far ahead of, and then what happened is several years, you know, it took about two years and then uh, other people in the space started picking different things. Hey, we can do that too. And oh, by the way, we're going to do it for 600 bucks. So we continue, you have to continue to evolve. You have to continue to come out and, 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 and listen to what's happening in the space and then, you know, plan accordingly. 
So, I mean, that's, it's just, you know, and even if you don't, you know, and you, you, you know, with success, un, un, unfortunately comes slothfulness um, in a lot of people. And, you know, there's a lot of companies that aren't around anymore, you know? Um, and look, I, I wake up every day that that could happen to us. You know, we better, you better, you know, do you, do you go to work to work or do you go to work to wait? And I think that's a big difference to what a lot, a lot Tim, of how, how, how has your service offering changed since the beginning? Well, we continue to add. Uh, so we started out with um, obviously messaging in 2017. We were one of the first um, to add uh, what, what I hate the word now, but digital retailing. Um, uh, it's just the way people, people expect to be able to calculate their payments on, a, on the thing on the uh, a computer now. Um, 2019 uh, really changed a lot because it really elevated. And that leads me to the AI conversation. Uh, let me first say that we are building on AI. Um, we are uh, excited about and we're having a lot of, we have been for the last year, uh, but I've been saying for the last year that certain things like chat GPT and others is uh, dangerous because uh, it's not ready. I believe that um, kind of like the EV situation we're in right now, uh, the infrastructure, and I won't go on down that rabbit hole, but I believe the answer is a hybrid versus full EV. 100%. And yeah. I believe that the answer to AI, it facts Trump feelings, Kevin Fry, Jack, uh, 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 Jeff Weiler in Cincinnati, 13, his, his slide from digital dealer two years ago, not mine, 1,372% increase in ROI, ROI. So, so we went from first to add rich objects, first to included conversational commerce, which, which Brian Pash coined that phrase, conversational commerce, right? And then everybody jumped on the bag wagon, with the, that statistic. And then taking their normal CTA, like pre-qualify or sell us your trader or, or tr whatever it is, but automating that to where it just pushed that customer down the funnel. So if someone goes on the website and says, hey, let me see what uh, my car's worth. But at the same time, I was on that Toyota Camry, stock number one, two, three. It's going to say, hey, boom, 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 boom. Here's what your car's worth. Do you want to go ahead and set an appointment on stock number one, two, three? Boom. So we're pushing that customer further. And it's the golden rule. Do unto others. as you. So when you give, 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 that's when people respond. So they started responding. So in 2019, we just crushed it with con what we called convert now now we include it in our platform and and then we we launched the showroom piece which which uh, a showroom and desking uh light desking it, that's going to continue to evolve but the showroom piece uh we're really excited about uh we're hoping this week there's going to be a monster announcement uh with a particular oem um you know the oem has wants to own the data um rightfully so I, I could spend an hour on that. So please stop me, you know, um, but we really, we are going to handle all of tier one for a particular OEM, but then we are going to be able to share that data with multiple of our competitors. You know, you can't go into a Sonic and say, here, here's, you know, you, you have to, you, because you have, you know, Chrysler stores or, or, or Nissan stores, you have to, you can't do that. So you have to be able to be humble enough to say, and, and, and smart enough to say, share this. So from tier one, share into tier three, into a showroom position. We're pretty excited about that. So a um, lot going on, a lot more going on. Uh, we can touch on NADA later, at least our idea. But uh, needless to say, we've been pretty busy. That's awesome. Yes. All right. Should the announcement, the announcement's going to be before NADA? We're, we're, we hope so. Um, now, this particular, I don't want to get in trouble. So we were, this particular OEM, we were at their national sales meeting uh, in October, I think it was September. Whenever the, first, whenever the Chiefs played the uh, Lions and the Lions won because that was at our booth, um, that's when that we were actually there. So there's a lot of people that know, but since this is on a podcast, I want to be careful. But I do believe, you know, OEM, Consumer loyalty is at an all-time low. With OEM, it's, it's, it's roughly 50%. And that's including Lexus that's at 70, 75%, right? And dealership loyalty is at 27%. So that's why OEMs, and rightfully so, are trying to own the experience because we haven't done a really good job. 
And so if you can take all of that and, and take from tier one and seamless that, because because people, the frustrating thing with digital retailing or modern retailing is that, you know, people will spend 30, 40 minutes online and they come in dealership and they're like, who are you? It's bridging that gap. So there's going to be, and there's a lot of, look, there's a lot of great companies that aren't in car now that are doing some cool stuff. So uh, I think it's going to be very interesting. And in then, you know, the next two or three years for sure. And, and with the and with the competition like with Varum and, and Carvana, how how's Carnell helping the brick and mortars compete with those digital retailers? I would argue you can give a better experience because um, at the end of the day, um, I don't know if you've seen you know you know Tim talks or or any of the conferences that I speak at. I I don't talk about our product. I just don't. I talk about the people inside the store. I talk about leadership inside the dealership. And I would argue that, that in fact, I'm not even going to argue. It's a fact, not a feeling, that some of the best dealerships in the country are that way because of the leadership in the country. Here in Atlanta, Patrick Abad, Beaver Toyota, 43 people followed the guy from Tampa, sunny Tampa, Florida. It's going to be 17 degrees here tonight in Atlanta. And they live here and they turn that store around to the largest dealer group. Look at Kevin Deutsch of, of Butler Lexus South Atlanta pe that we know. people. I live in Peachtree City. People would not go to that dealership. What did he do? He pushed everybody. He had the first meeting, pushed everybody's business cards. Nobody has titles anymore. We're serving people. And no matter what we're doing, whether we're in the dealership or whatever company you have, it's all about leadership people are hung people want to follow that type of stuff so when i go and i talk about you know at, on any stage that given me yes it's about understanding what's in here and allowing um uh you living a life and you leading people in such a way that they want to follow and it's not because there's a lot of you know we live in a social media world where look at me take care of me i'm awesome look at my fancy car and look at my big house and it, look there's nothing wrong with things right but who are you when no one's around? And, and those types of things, you're not going to win that debate with me. I, I've been in the worst dealerships in the country, and so have you guys. And I've been in the best dealerships in the country. And that is the common denominator, period, end of story. It's not debatable. So what are you doing as a leader to lead your people? Are you leading with humility, right? Are you leading with do as I do instead of do as I say? So unpacking those um, are a big part of my time, and 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 we've we've found so much success uh, in that. Uh, Tim, if you will, uh, tell us about your organization with your sales um, team. Is it local or is it spread out throughout the, the, the United States? All over the place. Yeah, we're we're all over the United States. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, obviously we started here in Atlanta. Um, and depending on, you know, where we found amazing salespeople, which we have amazing salespeople everywhere. Some markets are saturated. You know, we've been blessed in the mid A Baltimore, DC area, 62% pro, you know, penetration. Um, there, there's certain pockets of the United States, Cincinnati, obviously with my ties in Northern Kentucky, uh, the great, great, you know, I don't want to continue to rattle off, uh, group names, but, uh, we've been very fortunate there as well. So, so we do have people all over the country. I would argue, uh, the differentiator is the service we provide. Are we perfect? No. Do we drop the ball? Yeah. Do we have Dallas type games? Of course, those days happen. Um, but it's it's serving the dealer in such a way that that you respond even if you know something you know something screws up. But yeah, uh, we have uh, about eighty people, maybe eighty five people on our performance and support team, and that's broken up. Uh, so client success here in Atlanta, you know, we get a contract, you know, web provider, feed provider, you know, they make sure all the dealers and then performance managers obviously partner with sales managers to make sure that that, uh, that is uh, squared away. We're looking at, uh, you know, uh, an alignment of those because there are some people that are performance managers that could do a great job, you know, uh, upselling or selling as well. So that presently is, is, is where we're at and what, and how we do it. Nice. It's interesting, you know, we, we do some business uh, in, in the healthcare space and COVID really changed the patient expectation. You know, we went from walking into an office and being handed a clipboard 
and you'd sit there, fill, fill out four or five pages just, just to see a doctor. Um, then, then the inability to go to a doctor created this online, this virtual experience where people expected now to see a doctor through, through Zoom. And um, now coming out of COVID, things are, it's, it's a little wonky. It's a little, people are a little unsure. Do we go 100% in this, in this direction? Is this what the patient needs? Is this what's best for healthcare? Um, explain a little bit about what you see in the next decade of the car business based on what is available. I don't know how much more technologically advanced we can get, but I clearly see companies like Amazon and what, what consumers expect now, the expectations are so high uh, that, that uh, it's got to be affecting digital retail as it pertains to dealers. I don't, I mean, it's a question, uh, Tim, not a, not a statement, but can you share with us a little bit about what you see based on consumer behavior, based on human behavior, what is this going to look like 10 years from today? So, you know, again, I'll go back to only facts and human behavior. Um, you have to, you know, there, not everyone wants to buy a car online. People want to feel it, smell it, touch it. What they don't want is throwing the keys on the roof, four hours in the dealership, five hours in the dealership. That's what they don't want. And let me give you, let me go back to facts here, not feeling. Click lane from Asbury. Do you know that 90%, uh, I'm going to say that again. 90% of everyone last year that bought a car through Click, Click Lane, excuse me, was new to Asbury. 90%. So we're, we're casting, is it, is it going away? No. Is it, again, I don't want to play politician here, but it's just like the EV and the hybrid thing. It, it, you have to be able to, with your dealership, with your business, uh, facilitate any way back to Bob Warner, we need to sell cars the way people want to buy them, no matter how they want to buy them. You know, if, if people, a big mistake is, you know, people go in and, and I see it. People will chat with a customer. Hey, what's your phone number? Let me call, you know, let me, if they're chatting with you, you're chatting for a reason. Once you earn that right, they might say, Hey, let, you know, so those types of things you have to, you have to um, spread. The, and, and, and Asbury, I believe, projected in the next couple of years, projected to do $2.2 billion through Clickling. You think they're pulling the plug on that? So, so this is the behavior. So, so will we, I do know that people do want that, especially, you know, America has a love affair with their automobiles for the most part, right? I, I, I'm a hillbilly from Kentucky. I still love the smell of gasoline and oil, and I love the sound of a throaty exhaust. And I and we we are and we are enthralled with it. No pun intended. So there's going to be a section, but the key is: ten years from now, will will everything go online? I, I don't think so. Will all salespeople be gone? I don't think so. I think that more people, we will the technology will continue to get better as Amazon's and others obviously partner with Hyundai now. Um, there's still going to have to be that relationship at the dealership. Look, perfect example, Tesla. What do you see now popping up everywhere? Because I travel the country. Oh, there's a Tesla dealership. There's a Tesla dealership. Another city. There's a Tesla dealership. We don't need dealers. Yeah, you do. You do. So, 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 you know, even someone as smart as Elon Musk, brilliant. Our service is, is we're getting, whoa, whoa, <laughs> Twitter, X is going wild. Twitter's going wild. Our service, things are blowing up. Oh my gosh, I need, I need, they're building brick and mortars. Yep. So do I have a crystal ball? No. But when you look at the smartest people in the world and their ideas, great idea. The Tesla brick and mortars are now going up all over the country. My friends in the car automotive space, I don't believe we're going away. We just need to continue to look at our this thing called the automotive space as our craft. And are we, like the Cowboys probably are right now, looking at the game film, seeing where the good play happened, seeing where we dropped the ball. Okay, you know what? How do I get better today? Better today than yesterday. And if we continue to do that, then then, then we're going to continue to be profitable and continue to be fine. Now the, the, the customer has changed, right? Now we've got inventory again and every, you know, so this is changing, but we're going to be fine. I, I, I do believe it's going to be a hybrid. I do believe more people, you say 10 years, you know, instead of just 
you know, 15% of the population, 20% of the population, what it's, it's not even, excuse me, it's not even that high. It was uh, uh, projected to be not, uh, 12% by 2025 of the population totally would buy a car. Uh, that's just uh, two years from now online. So we're still scratching the surface. So I think that number will grow. That number was from David Spisak. I don't know if you know David or not. Yep. Um, sits on the board at Techion, really bright guy. Uh, speaks all over the country, but that was his number. I heard him say a couple years ago. So um, it'll be interesting. At the end of the day, we have to study our craft. We can't sit back with our feet up, and we have to continue to try to. At the end of the day, if you serve your customers, like Chick Fil A, right, who's closed on Sunday, and you still pay seven dollars for a freaking chicken sandwich, why? People expect an experience. It's the same thing. This isn't rocket science, guys. You love on your people. You take care of your people. You provide a ridiculous experience. And you serve your people that call you boss to in, to allow them to serve your customers. Then you have what happened at Beaver Toyota, at Butler Lexus of South Atlanta, and I can go on and on and on and on. You create that environment, you're good. You continue to yeah. learn. And people will you. gladly people will gladly pay the seven dollars a sandwich for the experience. Okay. There's a line around the building, and it's amazing. Chick Fil A's a a different breed. Yep. What's your go-to social media? You know, believe it or not, I, I try. I'll post here and there. We just had a, a phenomenal. In fact, she's going to be my coach. I heard. Um, I, I don't post a lot. I just don't. I'll scroll through fake because I like Facebook Marketplace and tinkering, and maybe I'll buy this car and flip this car, and you know, I do that. Um, we obviously have a great team. Uh, our marketing team. In fact, we're going to make some. We're going to actually boost that right before NADA, which is only two weeks away. But um, I don't have a go-to. You know, I don't I don't post a lot on social media. You know, our marketing team does that. You know, I love I do love lo learning and um, uh, getting better. Like I I, I cut myself off. Uh, Danelle De, uh, De Delgado, I met her a couple years ago, speaking at the Glenn Lundy event. I heard her two two months three months ago speaking at the VinQ event, and this this. She's phenomenal. So I had her on a Tim talk and I posted that on my personal Facebook because I wanted to help people because it truly was a ridiculous story. Single mom, three kids, apartment, no, no money, beat cancer twice. And now she's on the cover of Forbes magazine. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Incredible, so I incredible story. That. But I, I don't, I, I don't, maybe I should um, a little more. Probably she's going to tell me to, to get out there a little more um, as I really dive in. Um, with with the leadership part of this space, but um, I don't really have a go to. I, I would argue probably, I guess, Facebook or Meta, you know, um, just because of you know uh, I've got friends and business associates on on that versus you know Instagram or 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 others. Are you still doing the clubhouse talk, modern day car sales with Kevin? Um, I, I, not as much anymore. Um, I have been busier. Um, and, and, and travel schedules uh, more than um, I, I have in the past. Um, so I haven't been on, I've been, in, I, I jump in every once in a while um, in, in the morning, but it's, it's not as steady as it is not as steady as it was. Okay. I still do it every morning, right? 645. Yeah. They, they do. Yep. Uh, well, there, there's two of them. I think it's all things cars is every morning. And then modern day car sales uh, is a couple times a week now. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I was going to ask you because I, I watched the podcast with Ali Rita and Damien Boudreaux, who I've known for, I've known Damien for 30 years. He introduced me to the um, Grant Cardone. He introduced me to Grant probably in 2000, and I went to work for Grant Cardone in 2004. Um, but I was watching that episode, and in that episode, you were, you know, emphasizing that even the greats like Tiger Woods and Michael Jordan have coaches. So I was going to ask, you know, and I think you might have answered it already. Who, who's your coach? Who's your mentor? Well, I, I look at, um, uh, I mean, it, it, you know, and I think it changes. It's a moving ball. I, I would argue right now, um, even though it's not official yet, you know, I've been looking towards uh, to D Danielle um, to hopefully take what I want to do. I'm looking at things differently now. You know, I've put people uh, on pedestals before in my life, whether that's spiritually or professionally. And unfortunately, there's, you know, more times than not, they fail, they fall. 
Um, so again, my, my faith is pre pretty important because he's never going to fail me. I, I, you know, I, I read, I, um, I uh, love Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, I love John Maxwell. Uh, those are my two good, my, I would argue probably John Maxwell even more than, 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 uh, I love the tipping point by, uh, by Gladwell, but I, I continue to just try to feed my brain with, 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 you know, positive energy and people that have already walked this minefield that I'm walking. I, you know, as, as I'm 52 years old and if I'm average, you know, I'm going to, you know, what, what is it? 78, 76, you know, I, I've got 25 summers left. I mean, it's morbid. To think. It might be, I got a lot to do. You know, I got a, I got a grandbaby coming. You know what I mean? I got, I got, I got, I got my, my son's getting ready to get married. So, so what, in the, that's where my refocusing is look, but, 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 you know, what are people going to say? What do people say? And, and that's the key. As I, as I go across the country and talk about leadership, you know, what do people say about you when you're not in the room? And, and the biggest question is, if we're really true with ourselves, what is it like to be on the other side of me? Don't answer. Take inventory. What is it really like to be on the other side of me? Because in this space, in this automotive space, we have so many people, and I'm not throwing stones, but I've seen them. They're seagull managers. You know what seagull managers are? A seagull manager, what does a seagull do? Everybody's having a great time on the beach and we're having fun and a seagull just flies in over the beach. Everybody's having a great, they take a crap on everything and then they just completely leave out, right? <laughs> right, that's a seagull manager. We have a lot of seagull managers in the automotive space. We need some, we need some, we need some people that, are, that, are, that, are, that, are, that will humble themselves and, and get roll their sleeves up and pour into their people. And I've said it a lot. You know, when you chase significance in people's lives, when you chase significance in that in that receptionist uh, that you walk past every day, when you chase significance with that custodian, you chase significance and and really dive in and take the time to understand what their hopes and dreams and 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 and, and things are, changes everything. Literally changes everything. So 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 my you know God gives me another hopefully thirty years in life. I am going to do everything that I can to uh, continue to build significance in others, to 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 leave a legacy, to to really hopefully get a glimpse of what happens when you chase significance. Success just comes. It just always does. It just always does. Awesome. How about Jeff, how about Jeff Henderson? You, you follow him? Yes, um, I, I've heard him speak. Um, in fact, Jeff Henderson, I believe, is who gave that message. What's it like to be on the other side of you? I'm almost positive that's where I heard that. I should have gave him yeah. uh, credit when I said that. Um, um, I'm almost positive. So yeah, I, I, guys, I get it from all over the place. If if they're you know Instagram scroll whatever. And based on your scrolling habits, you know, that type of stuff pops up, um, you know, that that made an impact uh, on me. And just that single question and, 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 and nothing against Jeff, but there's not a lot I remember about that entire talk other than that was that was planted in my head. Let, let me let me let me give this as we land the plane. It was 1990. Summer of 19, right. 1990 ish. And I had just started selling cars, 17 years old. Maybe I was 18 at the time. Um, doing really well. They, they built a brand new dealership and they, this is how old, long ago it was. They had a brand new dealership, still smelled like paint and they had ashtrays on the desks. This is Kentucky now. So, oh yeah, 1990. So people were still smoking inside. And I had, a, I had a, a short little dude, and I'm not tall by any stretch, but he was probably 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, but he was a bulldog of his desk manager. And he's like, Tim, let's take a walk. And he put his arm around me, and I, I pass it. In fact, I'm going to pass it on, on Thursday because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in Kentucky Thursday. He walks me at the top of the hill at Jake Sweeney, now Kia, then Hyundai. And he said, Tim, he said, you got a lot of talent. He's like, I see how hard you work. I see how people interact with you and your personality. He said, this is an incredible business. And he said, you see that house right here? And look, we weren't poor growing up. I'm not going to give that story. We didn't. My dad's a pastor. We didn't have a lot. But it was twice, three times as big as my house was. And he said, one day you could have a, a house like that. And I know that's material. 
what I'm trying to get at, and David was his name. David took the time, put his arm around an 18 year old kid and walk him up a hill. So, so, so that's what I want to encourage all of us. Who's your 18 year old Tim Cox? Who's your 18 year old kid that you could put your arm around or your 20 year old kid or your 50 year old single mom, whatever. Who is that person that you're going to put your arm around, walk up a hill and say, if you just do this, this is what you can have. Changed my life. Started believing in myself again. Because the people around me smoking and joking, oh, you, how many hours you work? Let me see your paycheck. How many, all the guys with the, with the big beer guts, nothing against people with big beer guts, big, you know, smoking and joking, oh, let me see how many hours you worked and this and that and all, oh, you know, you only made this. And, and, and Dave was like, look, they're trying to black you out. You got to funnel it out, right? So, so when I wake up every day, do I, do I, do I screw up? Of course. Um, but, but what I try to tell people, like Danielle talks about in her book, I Choose Joy, is waking up um, thankful, waking up with gratitude, setting the tone the rest of the day, and then allowing yourself to, to, to put your arm around those people, walk them up a hill. Because once you do that, once you do that time and time and time and time and time again, people start believing. People start, hey, there's something, you know, it's, 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 it's back to Maxwell. You talk to people, you know, automotive, whoever's putting the microphone in my face, how did you grow so quick? Look, it's the law of attraction. You steal something from Max. Whoa, something's going on here. At Car- Why did 12 people leave from this big publicly traded company and now they're working? Something's going on here. It's the law of attraction and maybe most importantly, the law of duplication. Stole those from Maxwell. 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. But the law of duplication, my ego is not big enough that I'm going to continue to put little Tim's. I'm continue to put all these people around here so they think that do they fall down? Yes, but we continue to pour into them, and that's how you have growth. And that, in my humble opinion, is the key to, to ridiculous growth. That's awesome. That's awesome. Beautifully said, sir. Awesome. Chris, any last questions for Mr. Cox? I mean, I guess the last one is is a Jeff, Jeff Henderson has another question that he always asks, and I, I, I love this question. Um, but what do you want to be known for, Tim? Mm. That's deep. I want to be known that I made a difference. I just made a difference. Wasn't perfect. Wasn't the smartest guy in the room. <clears throat> Sorry, it's been a tough year, man. Lost my mom, put my dad in assisted living, ups and downs, even in car now, you know, the underbelly that people on the outside don't see, but things are great, you know, but but I want to be known for that dude made a difference in every opportunity that he had, whether that was helping somebody out that, that had less, whether that was taking somebody out, you know, aside and encouraging them. But you know what? That dude with time that he had on this earth made a difference. I'm going to, I'll, I'll, I'll close with this again, stealing everything from everyone else other than myself, Jeff Henderson, John Maxwell. But Maxwell says this, as I go to these fortune 100 companies and I have the privilege to speak, there's one differentiator on the difference makers. And that goes back to the Patrick's and the Kevin's and we can go on and on. They have leadership that says, I want to make a difference with people that want to make a difference, doing something that makes a difference. We're just selling cars. We're not. The dealership in the United States is the nucleus of the community. It supports the ball teams. It supports the charities. It gets the bad press, maybe rightfully so sometimes. But we are making a difference. And oh, by the way, we can make a difference in the people's lives in and around that dealership that they go for out and do that in uh, the community. So so sorry, that, that question hit me kind of hard and I was not prepared, but it, it quickly hit me. I just want to be known as that dude did whatever he can with the little skills that he had to make a difference in this world. And that's what I want to be known for. 
Well, Tim, you're doing it. Everyone I talk to and everyone that knows you, you're doing it. So I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thank yeah. you for the privilege of being on. Yeah. I love to, I love this type of stuff other than just selling automobiles. I mean, I think, you know, life is so precious and, and we're only given X amount of time. So what we do with it is, is precious. So, so what do people say about you when you're not around? <laughs> that, that's yeah. the key, right. That's yeah. good. That's good. Thank you so much, Tim. It's an honor. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you guys. Have a great week. All righty. On behalf of uh, everybody here at Reputation Sensei and Digital Media Nation for Chris and myself, it's been an absolute pleasure to safe space and share with none other than Tim Cox, owner and founder of Car Now, Career Car Guy. We're better for having been here. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. That's all for this episode of the Sensei Playbook. May these strategies help you build a powerful business roadmap and dominate the online marketplace right now. Be sure not to miss another episode jam-packed with valuable advice from our marketing martial artists, Bill and Chris, by subscribing to the podcast at podcast.reputationsensei.com. Don't forget to share with your friends and fellow entrepreneurs who also aspire for massive business success. Thank you for listening. Until next time.